Hello and welcome to the Eagle Creek Podcast. Today I'm so excited to speak with our lead pastor again, Pastor Matt Harris. This morning, um, as, a, as a staff, both of our campuses came together and we got to hear uh, a message that he put together for us, really just to encourage us as a staff in life and in ministry. Um, but I really feel like it's applicable to um, people of, in all walks of life, ministry or not, and um, just what it means to be faithful and what it means to um, just be a follower of Jesus in the midst of trials and tribulations and stretching. And so, anyway, super excited for everyone to be able to hear what you're going to talk about. So, thanks for yeah. being here today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Noah. Yeah, yeah I um, uh, we do this once a month where we get everyone from staff together, and uh, it's always fun for me that today we had all the interns. I don't know how many interns there were, but... Yeah, there was at least 10 uh, of them, yeah. Yeah, so there are like 35 people or something like that. So it was really cool. We had some time of worship together, and yep. and I always try to really have something that's like, this is the thing. And I, I didn't know what um, we were going to be doing today, and I was talking to Sherry this morning, and I was like, man, I'm trying to figure out, you know, for podcasts what I really want to... And she's like, man, I think what you're doing right now with all staff would be just, you know, really everyone's going through this. Everyone's working through the same stuff. And so the concept... Um, that I relayed this morning that I think is, uh, I just think everyone goes through it. You go through times where you're stretched, mm. and you're stretched thin, and you're stretched hard, and you're stretched where you're worn out, and your abilities and everything is just to a place where it's like, I just am done. I yeah. just can't do this. You know, I'm worn out with my kids, and I'm worn out with my job, and I'm letting everyone down, and I'm frustrated in life. And of course, when you're in ministry, that all, that happens in a recurring... That's like part of life. It's almost yeah. like you have a stretch and breathe cycle for life. Hopefully, you get a little breather in between the stretch, or I don't know if you'd make it, you know. Yep. Um, but the reality is that's something I was trying to uh, talk about today. For me, I I relate this back to um, like when I was in high school. I'm sure I was stretched at other times before this. Had to have been, but... I specifically remember the first time feeling this dramatically was in high school when I was in wrestling, and we had a coach who, his name was Coach Schweitzer, and we get out there and you'd have these three periods in a match, and you get to the third period, and for whatever reason, I mean, seemed like everyone else could wrestle three periods and be just fine, and they'd be like going strong on that <laughs> third period, and I'd get to the third period and just be toast. I'd have nothing left. In fact, in particular, I remember my arms were like lead. My arms would just be like, I couldn't hardly lift my arm up to wrestle a guy. Yeah. And so I'd get to the third period and I would stall. In fact, I'd almost want to just roll over on my back and let him pin me and just be done and go home. But I'd have the coach over there on the sideline just yelling, go Harris, go Harris, come on, come on, you can do better. And so he was so intense on the sideline, I knew if I quit, like I was going to pay for it. I didn't know what he was going to do, but it was going <laughs> to be bad. And so I just push and I'd keep going. And that idea of being stretched beyond what I felt like uh, what I could do really started then. And since then, you know, I've had many, you know, pull an all-nighter for a class. You're getting stretched beyond what you yeah. think you can do and you do it and you got four assignments due in one week in college and you are got a 30-page paper that you forgot about and it's due, you know, the day after tomorrow and you haven't started, you know. And so you'd have those in college. And then you get married and you think you're, yeah, hey, life is good. And then you have your first baby and they stay up all night <laughs> and it's two nights or three nights and then you're into month one or two Maybe. and you're trying to dump it off on your wife and she's wanting you to take over and you have to get up and go to work in the morning and you're sitting there at work with nothing going through your head, staring at a screen, trying to have conversations with people, yeah. and you just think, how much longer can I do this? <laughs> when, what, how could I escape this? And so the idea of learning to recognize a stretch period and then learning how to uh, not react wrong in a stretch yeah. period and then learning just the way to own that moment to set yourself up for long-term life success because stretch periods can always lead either downhill towards resentment or uphill towards greater capacity. Because the idea of being stretched is you're expanding your capacity as you're stretched. Yep. So, um, or else you're just splitting at the seams and busting and broken, you know. But it, the stretch can do one or the other. So with that, um, 
I just wanted to, uh, I'll deal with, you know, like here's some things that stretch us. Yep. One of the major things that stretch us is the time stretch where you feel like um, I'm at the end of myself. I've worked so many hours and then I go home and I don't get off. I go home and I work that many more hours and then I'm totally worn out and I get up the next morning and I start it all over again to the point of exhaustion and depletion. And that time stretch can become very frustrating where people get to where they resent nearly everything they're being asked to do because everything's too much. It's a stretch that they can't feel like they don't feel like they can handle. And then the experience stretch is where um, when you're working for someone or you're married and it's like, hey, I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Like when Sherry and I got married, um, I would try to remake her meals and tell her how to cook it right. <laughs> and she's like, trust me, I know how to make a hot dog, you know, yeah. but I would, you know, and I wasn't doing very good at trusting <laughs> and she was getting super frustrated with the experience stretch uh, for her. Mm -hmm. And then you have the weight stretch where it's like, why isn't, why aren't things happening? Why is it that I can't, potty train my child and I'm still changing diapers? Why is it that I'm not getting the raise that they said, well, if you work here a year, you'll probably be up here. And I've been here two years and finances are still struggling and the same and nothing's moving. Mm -hmm. And it seems like everything takes too long. And in that wait, we become frustrated and bitter. And so there's that weight stretch. And then there's the ability stretch where it's like, I genuinely know I'm not doing a good job. I may be losing my temper and frustrated and I'm not having the kind of Christian walk and why can't I get better quicker with my spiritual life or with my parenting life or with some skills at work? I missed a project. I didn't communicate with some people I needed to. I didn't respond to an email. I missed a meeting. And the ability stretch, we get very internally dissatisfied and frustrated with ourselves, And some people become... Uh, just dejected to where they're like, I, I'm never going to get this down. Uh, yeah. What is wrong with me? Why can't I figure life out? And so you'll have that ability stretch and then an expectation stretch where it's like everyone, as soon as I do something and I think, yay, I did it, they set the bar higher, right. you know? And, and it's, I got to do something more and something more and something more and something more. And it's funny, like with parenting kids, it's like, man, I thought it was tough to parent a toddler. Mm -hmm. And then they got in grade school and it's like, oh my gosh, I got to run every night of the week. I got four kids and all these different practices. Man, I thought I'd just stepped up my game. I'd come home, I'd roll around, I'd wrestle, I'd help with a little laundry, I'd change a couple diapers, I'd put them to bed by seven o'clock and I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. and now I get home, do all that, finish dinner and don't put them to get bed and start practices right. and then do homework. And then they hit junior high and high school, and now it's just run, 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 and they spend all your money. And <laughs> anyway, I was up till uh, 12 o'clock one night this week with a college student talking through significant issues in life until 11 o'clock the next night. I want to be in bed by 10, right. but I'm not going to not be there. Yeah. And so the idea of the stretch and the expectations just keep getting higher it's hard for some people. And so that stretch becomes a challenge. And then there's a relational stretch where kind of like what I was talking about, that it's more of a balance of there's not enough of me. Uh, my mom needs time from me and her aging years. And I want to be there for her. I love her. Mm -hmm. And I want to take my wife out on dates and spend time with her. And I got four kids and I want to spend individual time. I got to go out to lunch with my daughter yesterday and spend some hours talking with my son last night. And in your and you got work, and you're here, and you're trying to connect with everyone here, and people in church, or in your career, your job, wherever you are. And so that idea of there's just not enough of me, and someone's always going to be disappointed. So you end up with this relational stretch. And then I guess the final one I'll just mention, there's many more, but reputational stretch. For a lot of people, it's like, you know, it's like I'm, I'm actually in a right way with a good heart trying to help out. And instead, you're acting like I'm being controlling, or you're acting like I was inconsiderate, or you're a treat, talking about me like, you know, I think I'm a know-it-all. And, and I didn't, none of this was about that. It was, I was trying to help. Yeah. And you have that reputational stretch, and your instinct is to fight and defend and go after it. And yet, as a follower of Christ, you're finding yourself saying, 
I have to be silent as Jesus was, as a lamb who went to the slaughter. You know, he didn't defend himself. He didn't say, and his reputation is on the line, and he's remaining silent. And you have these times of reputational stretch. And so in, in all life, you, all these things are stretching you. And sometimes you got like two or three of them happening simultaneously, which is totally unfair. It's like, hey, God, uh, how about one at a time with a nice week or two break between them, especially with kids, you know, give me a break between one kid problem and the next so I can catch my breath. But that isn't actually the way life works out. The way life works out is a lot of things are hitting you at the same time and stretching you beyond your capacity. There's a great scripture, um, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18 says this, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes Mm -hmm. on what is seen, not on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal. And for a lot of the things that we're going through the stretch for, the other side of that seems pretty far away to get to it. But we're doing it with some faith that when we have the stick-to-itiveness, this capacity to stay in there, that there is a long-term payoff. And I'm just far enough down the road. I'm 54, hitting 55 in the next month. And I'm not an old guy. I'm not a young guy. But I'm just far enough down the road to say the stretch that I spent on my kids, I'm seeing the reward. And I believe in eternal reward as my kids love Jesus and are committed to Christ-like things. I'm seeing the reward in my marriage of the frustration that comes inevitably with marriage to every marriage and the how do I endure the stretch and not become angry and bitter and brawling and frustrated and, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. and just keep working and growing and stretching to the capacity that I need to be to love my wife as her husband and the same in ministry and what I do in work and in my own character and just over and over and over again, it's that capacity to keep going and then you start seeing some payoff, but it takes a while. It takes some years. And most people give up in that midsection before they ever see the reward. And it's a shame because what happens is you put all the effort in, you don't see the reward, and you quit on it. So you're never going to see the reward. And you try to, you know, throw in the towel on that. And then you, but everyone has a desire to achieve and for their life to be meaningful. And so what do they do? They pick up another venture another idea, another relationship, another job, another something, and another hobby, because they need to succeed at something, and they push, and they go, and then what happens? Well, you have the stretch, and in the stretch, you have the weight, and in the weight, you give up again, Right. and so you can live a life in the front end of the cycle and if you never stay with the stretch until you are stretched to a capacity that allows you to succeed, mm. then you never reach your potential by shifting, shifting, shifting. You only do it by enduring the stretch till you have the capacity for the success you were created for. Mm. And you can only learn that on the back end of the stretch. Yep. And so many people never get to the back end because they quit in the waiting period. And I've observed that over and over and over again in life. And you just ache for people like that because they'll come to me and say, I'm just trying to figure out what I was meant for. I'm like, you were meant for what you were doing 15 years ago and you should have stuck with it. Mm. Well, what do I do now? Well, now you've got another 15 years. (laughs) You know, what am I going to tell you other than it's going to take another stretch period of your life where you decide and go for it and stay with it until you can see some of those things pay off in life in relationship and marriage and kids and all this sort of stuff. So um, the way I see, and I'm talking a little bit about this, how I see people respond when they feel stretched is, I do see that escapism mentality. How do I just get out of this? How do I, ah, I can't handle it. How do I get out of it? Um, James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Um, when it produces something, the testing produces, well, you're going to have to stay with it to produce perseverance. It's not automatic because the testing of some people's faith 
produces escapism. Right. The testing of other people's faith produces perseverance. Well, how does it produce perseverance? You persevere. How did I get to where I could wrestle through to the end of the third period um, in wrestling? I kept wrestling through to the end of the third period, and by midway through the season, I could wrestle through to the end of the third period and still have energy to burn. Mm. I also took up some running and jump roping and a lot of other stuff that my coach <laughs> made me do, but I pushed through till I... So the testing of your faith produces perseverance as you persevere, and then it goes on. But let perseverance finish its work. There's an outcome for marriage, for career, for kids, for your own character. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So God has this maturity that's designed specifically, I'm looking at you, Noah, for, for you, Noah. Yeah. He has this completeness to your career path, to your marriage, to your parenting. He sees the end benefit and blessing of the whole of your marriage efforts put into one complete picture for you, for marriage. Yeah. For you and Jessica, and for me and Sherry, and for every one of my kids, there's a completeness to Matt as the pastor of Eagle Creek. If I reach my full potential by persevering and not giving up, there's a maturity for me mm. and a completeness for my work. And I won't be lacking saying, I need to chase after something else. Yeah. I need to chase after, I'm lacking and I need to find it somewhere else. And that's why so many people never live the fulfilled life is because they never learn to endure the stretch. Mm. And it's only through enduring that that we get to the other side. So, and yeah. by the way, I'm saying a whole bunch of stuff I didn't say this morning. Yeah, but. no, it's so good. I, um, I mean, I feel like you're speaking directly to me. I feel like there's so many, I mean, we don't know who's listening. You know, it mm -hmm. could be moms, it could be dads, it could be ministry leaders, you know, yeah. y you know, young leaders, old leaders, church, not church, you know, corporate world, whatever. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of young leaders, even if we could address them right now, because I feel like that's really who you were addressing this morning, where this is so relevant. Um, and I feel like to, to be vulnerable, I mean, that's a cycle that I've seen in my life and in so many of my friends for, for years. You know what I mean? And we're just... And I say me too. Yeah. And I'm not a young leader, but <laughs> yeah. that's part of life. Well, and and even to... to in, just, I saw something on, on Instagram the other day, a, a really good friend of mine who's a uh, young adult and, and youth pastor. Um, he's still at the church he grew up in. He's still at the church he got saved in, and now he's leading in that church. And um, he, you know, just he, he, he posted a couple weeks ago just about just celebrating, you know, what God's done while, you know, in his time there. And he's still there. And um, he said... It was so powerful. I, even when I read it on Instagram, I was like, man, it just spoke directly to my heart. He said, he said, after talking to my leaders and so grateful for this, this house and everything that's poured into me and, and how stretching it was and how much I've grown. And, and this wasn't in like, a, I'm leaving. This was in like, a, you know, I'm continuing to stay here and keep doing this. But yeah. he said, it will, he said, my story is that I stayed. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. literally I almost cried when I read it because yeah. I was like, I want that to be my story. Yep. Like I want, I want, I want there to be, I want it to be said of me that I stayed. I didn't just leave whenever I felt the stretch. Yeah. And there's so many of us who do just leave and go on to the, and we, we never get past that stretching period and onto the fruit, Right. Yeah. And, um, I just felt that's so relevant. Yeah. So relevant. I mean, and, and one thing you did this morning, um, and, and if there's something else you want to say, definitely yeah. speak into it. But um, at, at some point before we go, I'd love for, you know, this morning you prayed over us and yeah. you just imparted, right? right? You talked about this power, the power of impartation um, as someone who you're still have seasons of stretching. Mm -hmm. But you said the big thing for you, right, is you're now, you still get stretched, but you now understand the stretching process. Yeah. And that's something a lot of young leaders, we feel the stretch and we feel that tension, we feel the pressure, but we don't... Um, see we haven't seen the fruit or even have the forward thinking enough to know that there's fruit on the other side right and so at some point um i'd love for you to just pray yeah before we close sure. and just pray a, a prayer of impartation 
over young leaders, over moms, over dads, whoever's listening, whether they're mowing their lawn right now or whether they're putting their kids to sleep, whatever, you know, uh, on a run, whatever. Um, I just feel like there's, uh, if you could just impart that, yeah, you know, even over this podcast, right? Like I just feel like there's people who are listening as they're driving right now who are really going to be impacted by this. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but before we do that, was there anything else you wanted to share about that concept? Um, well, I, okay, so you said something that sort of made me think of another group that might yeah. be on here, and this will apply probably to a lot of people, but um, there are young leaders that are pastors in churches, and for me, uh, you know, God's blessed the church, it's grown, and, you know, we're a church of a bunch of people, yeah. and multi-site, and start mm-hmm. another, and this sort of stuff, and of course, there's a lot of people who've done you pastor of much bigger churches and all that. Um, so it's not yeah. that that I'm saying. But what I'm saying is because of where we are, I have young leaders ask me, young pastors ask me, the simple question with the, has an incredibly complex answer, but the simple question, what's it take to grow a great church? You know, what, mm-hmm. what did you do? Mm-hmm. Well, there's no <laughs> like, you know, it's like, come and work for me for a few years and, you know, maybe we could get there, yeah. but it's not something I can get to in one conversation. And so in lieu of not having any sort of simple answer like that, I give them the very big, broad answer, which is I stayed. Yeah. And over and over again, I'll say, you can't, generally speaking, build anything great quick. Yeah. You, it takes a long time. I did not know how to do this when I started this. Mm. I just kept staying. Mm. And as I kept staying, I, I knew I was called to something more. And so I had to keep learning. And I had to keep changing. And then I had to keep stretching, you know. Mm. And with God always stretching and always calling me to something more, I eventually grew into the place where we are today. Yeah. But yet, I'm not anywhere close to done with the call and the stretch. Yeah. And so when someone asks me 10 years from now, what's the key? I'm probably still going to say, stay. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. stick with it long enough and allow yourself to be stretched and grown. Then you'll know all the other things you need to know because you put yourself in the position to know them. Mm. I would say that about marriage. What's the key? Well, First of all, decide to stay. Right. And once you know, here was a weird little thing, but it, it made a lot of sense to me. I didn't grow up in my my wife and I. Neither one grew up in healthy homes with healthy marriages, right? So then we get married. and We're like, what's it going to take? Well, number one, I'm never going to leave you. That's just number one, and that was yeah. absolutely like we took the D word off of the table, mm-hmm. and literally, if we even mention it in reference to someone else's life, we have this sort of cringy, like, oh, we said the D word, but it doesn't count because it's not about us, right? You right, know, right, right. it's like, we can't say the word. Um, so because we knew we were going to stay and we don't want to live a miserable life, who wants to live a miserable life? Then what's your other option? You want to stay and you're going to stay and divorce isn't an option. So what now? How about if we figure this out? and get really good at it, because I would love to have a really good life. And the only way that's going to happen with marriage is if I figured out, well, that's true as a pastor. That's true as a parent. I'm going to have the kids at home for at least 18 years, and they're going to be coming back in the summers, and it may be 22. And if they're trying to do their master's and live at home, which may be happening to us, (laughs) it may be 23, 24. If you got 24 years of it, figure out how to raise great kids for God. Yeah. Um, because that connection and that reward is worth all the effort into it. So the stretch is worth it when you understand you're in a long-term commitment to the things you've been called to. Yeah. But when you don't own the commitment and the long-term call fully, I will do this, it's easy to avoid the stretch. Yeah. I think the commitment is what keeps you in the stretch. So... I think that's one thing I try to communicate to people, you know, just to make sure that you understand sort of the heart behind it. And uh, a verse that I ended with, um, I probably, I want to hit with, uh, with everyone here just before I pray. Yeah. Um, 
In Deuteronomy 31, verse 8, it says this. It says, the Lord himself goes before you, and he will be with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. So do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. The concept is he goes before you and he will be with you and he will never leave you. And so bottom line, when we know that, we're like, so if you're going before me, then you know the stretch years I'm going to have at work. Mm -hmm. You knew it before I got there and you didn't leave me in those stretch years you knew my stretch years as a parent when I would have three toddlers driving me insane. Mm -hmm. And I would be at the end of myself and there wouldn't be enough of me to go around and I'd have to be working a second job at home and running kids everywhere. And you, you were before all of that and knew it. And yet you promised that you would be with me right in the middle of all this. So I'm not... I'm not ever in the stretch with someone who doesn't love me and care about me and know exactly what I'm going through and with the very best of intentions for me, for my future, and sees all the potential pent up within me that the stretch is expanding and opening up within me. And so as what I said earlier when we prayed is, and it was something that I just felt sort of impressed on me, I believe very much that there's that we can impart something to one another mm. as people and as Christians, as followers of Christ, specifically, the Spirit of God is living in us. He's part of our life and He's done a work in us and got us to this place. Maybe someone's overcome an addiction. Well, God's Spirit had to work a freedom in them to overcome that addiction or overcome unforgiveness and God had to work a freedom in that. For me, God's had to work a lot of work in the stretch for me over the years. And so to be able to accept these things and grow from these things. So what I did was just said, that's something that the Spirit of God has worked within me. And that's something that as I pray for people, I think God can bring that to their lives in a greater measure, not like instantly, you know, doesn't mean you're out of the stretch. Right, right. It means that God's, there's a sense of God in the stretch and a capacity to endure and grow from the stretch rather than break and run and escape, you know? Mm. And so that's what I did. I just prayed. And so that's what I, I think I'd like to end it that way and just pray great. for everyone who's listening yep. and pray that God will give you um, through his spirit an impartation of grace yeah. for this season of stretch that you're in. So. Mm -hmm. Good? It's great. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's do that. Let's do it. Lord, I, I thank you that for everyone who's listening today, you, you knew the moment. You knew they would be drawn in. You knew they would listen to this point in the podcast, and they would be so ready to receive some help and probably their heart is most crying out for that. Just help. It's too much. I can't carry it. What do I do? And so, Holy Spirit, in this very moment, whenever and wherever someone is listening who's in that place of needing help, I just ask that the Holy Spirit would go out. I pray a prayer of impartation. Impart to them grace impart to them strength, impart to them the love where you said you would never leave us, you would never forsake us, you would go ahead of us, you would be with us. Impart that presence of God right now to give that mom strength for another day of parenting and that dad strength for another day of being pulled a million directions and feeling like there's not enough of him to go around impart that grace for the Christian that wonders when they're ever going to win this battle over sin and the struggle, and for that leader that feels like, when can I finally break through to my potential and see the growth happen in my business, in my church, in my department? I pray that grace over each person listening, that you would impart all the strength and grace they need for the stretch that they're in today. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, amen. So good. So good. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Um, Absolutely. Thank you for today. Thank you for speaking to us as a staff today. Thank you for doing this. Um, I think it's going to help a lot of people. And um, um, yeah, so thank you guys for listening today. Thank you for joining the Eagle Creek podcast. 
um, we're going to be on YouTube. You're, if you're watching right now on YouTube, please like and subscribe and comment down below. Um, and if you could do us a favor and leave a review, whether you're listening on Spotify or on um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening to the podcast, please leave a re review. It helps us immensely um, just kind of spread um, spread the news of what's going on here and what God's doing in Eagle Creek and and just kind of, um, you know, you being able to impart things. And so I'm really excited for um, this is episode. This is actually only episode one. So yeah. we, we've recorded episode zero last week. This is episode one. I think this is an incredible episode one um, in a starting place. And um, so anyways, I'm really excited for um, how, the, how the Lord is going to use this podcast. Yep. I am too. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Good to see everyone. And I think we'll see everyone next week, right? Yep. See you guys next week. See you next week.